Hello, welcome to our little shop. And as I mentioned earlier in the B25 video, this is gonna be a part two, belongs to the same owner. And he brought this one in when he picked up the B25. So it looks like we're gonna be doing the same deal here. We're gonna be getting a new bridge, bridge plate, a few other things. So I just thought I'd give you an intro here. And I'm going to start taking this guitar apart, start tearing it down. I'm going to get the bridge off, get all the hardware out, get the bridge plate out, and get on to the serious work. Well, we're about a half hour in at this point. I have the bridge off. That was pretty easy. Uh, it was pretty much loose. They're already stuck in a couple of places and slid. Just to repeat, uh, there's all the hardware that's underneath the top on one of these things. I've also taken the pick guard off and cleaned up underneath it and the back side of it. I'll be using a uh, pick guard adhesive sheets to put this back on with. They tend to shrink a little bit and pop loose. It was probably three quarters of the way loose. So I just took it off to clean it up. So, the point we're at here right now, our next move is to get the bridge plate out of this. It's got another horribly chewed up plywood bridge plate in it. So we're going to get it out and make a new one for it. Well, the bridge plate's out and cleaned up. We are ready to plug the two front holes here in this bridge where the adjustments were. We have a new bridge plate made. We've got our two indexing pins here that you can see. One with my thumb, one with my forefinger. And we're going to use to line this bridge plate back up when we put it in. So let's get these holes plugged and get this in then uh, this can set aside overnight. Well, we've got our plugs in. We have a nice little layer of tight bond here on our bridge plate. So let's get this in and get it clamped. Well, we're all clamped up. Set this aside till uh, tomorrow and see what happens at that point. Well, we come in this morning, took the clamps off, popped the locator pins out. Oh, and speaking of locator pins, uh, those are actually pieces, little pieces of um, golf tees supplied by K&K. &K. <laughs> so, thanks K&K. &K. Anyway, that's what I used to line those up with. The top is flattened out really well. Give you a look here. As usual, you know, when you replace the bridge plates, these usually straighten out pretty well. So we're going to get on to the rest of this. I have this again roughed out from the home shop. And we're going to make a bridge out of that and get it glued on. <clears throat> Alright, well we're hiding in here this morning before I uh, start dealing with customers. And I've got this bridge set up here. We're going to try to get it shaped today. We'll probably not get the uh, saddle slot routed, but we're going to try to get the bridge shaped. So I have all my weapons of uh, mass destruction here, construction how we want to look at it. We're not going to be using a lot of tools. I'm uh, going to be using, you know, a rasp, another rasp, 
piece of glass, calipers, old bridge, and there'll be some sandpaper thrown in here, here along the way, but uh, like I said, I'm not going to show you guys actually how to build one of these bridges, but since people are complaining I'm not showing enough detail, we're going to give you a quick look at what goes into this. So, away we go.
we have our new bridge on and it's clamped so we'll let it set I like to let these set for at least a couple days with clamps on them and then we'll continue on okay let's get you caught up here there's been a bit of a flurry of activity this morning um, as you can see, you know, we've got the bridge unclamped and all that. Uh, I've finished drilling all my bridge pin holes and the bolt holes here. We're going to put the bolts back in it. We don't really need them, but uh, we're going to put the bolts and the inlays back in here so this kind of looks at least a little bit more stock. Uh, it's just one of those things. Anyway, so we've got all this ready. We've got our saddle fitted. Uh, it's ready to be cut. As soon as I get this saddle rough cut, this guitar is going to be ready to be strung up for the first time. So, and I'm using a slightly wider saddle if you've noticed. It's just a little bit wider than an eighth inch. This again kind of looks a bit more stock um, for the later bridges with, that weren't adjustable. Only thing was they used a micarta saddle, a white one on the non-adjustable stuff. This is bone, of course. So what I'm going to do is leave this a little bit wide, and we might actually, if necessary, do an intonated saddle on this. Let's see what happens. We have the saddle roughed in, and it amazes me, I guessed at how much bridge saddle height I would need and I'm only a 64th of an inch high all across I haven't uh, really checked very well here because the top of the saddle is still square but um, intonation at this point looks pretty good I may not have to compensate this saddle but we did run into something else uh, there's a couple fret problems up here raining too but anyway, we're going to need a nut. The spacing's way off. You can see the difference in spacing here between the uh, D and G string, the D and A string, and you can also see how close the low E is to the side of the neck. So somebody's cobbled up a nut here for it. It's a bone nut. They've actually done some finish damage and stuff up here. So, we're going to fix that too. So, getting back to here, we're going to take this down again, take the uh, height I need off the bridge saddle, and shape. I'm going to rough shape the top of it. I'm going to leave it just a little bit uh, flat and check this intonation again. I think we're going to be right on. At that point, we can turn our attention to cutting the string slots into the bridge pin holes, getting our inlays in it and our bolts, getting some finish on this bridge, deal with the fret work, and get the nut made. And this will be winding down. Oh, and by the way, this is going to be another loud one. I mean, getting away from that plywood bridge plate and getting to a, a solid bridge makes a huge difference in these guitars. I'll be back. Yep, that worked out well. I just rounded over top of the saddle. The intonation is nearly perfect. I don't think I could really actually get it any closer with a compensated saddle, so why bother? I've noticed something else here too, and here's a tip for you. Maybe we'll talk about this more later, we'll see. Anyway, when I fitted the bridge pins, I usually take one bridge pin and go across and fit all the holes with it. As it turns out, a couple of these bridge pins don't fit well. So what I'm going to do when I take these back out is measure all of them and see what the difference in diameter is and make sure that I put ones in it that are actually the same diameter so they seat properly 
this is something you run into with a lot of the molded bridge pins these days. Just, you know, heads up. So, we're going to deal with this. We're going to move on to doing the fret work. We're going to have to make him a nut. So, time's a waste. So, I did some checking here. And I did find out the bridge pins were different sized. I now up here have some that are all the same diameter. Here were the two offenders that I had earlier. I actually went through my box here and I have uh, about 50 of these bridge pins in the box. I found they varied anywhere from uh, your standard was around 0.202 thousandths diameter. I found them that they went anywhere up to 10 thousandths, typically 5 to 10 thousandths over that. So these two right here actually measured about 6 thousandths bigger. Now you don't think 6 thousandths is a lot, but when you put it in a hole as a wedge, that's why they were sticking up. So, those do not go back in the box. Those have been used. They're going to go back in a drawer here to, to line up bridges when they're being re -glued. So, here we go. Just like I say, another uh, word up. So, the next thing we're going to do here is start replacing these bolts. Like I say, we don't have to put them in, but we're going to anyway. Instead of using the original steel, rusty bolts with the slot heads on them, we're going to be using stainless steel Phillips head screws. We're going to be using a washer, a lock washer, and a nut on them. So let's get that done, get the inlays in. Okay, bolts are in, inlays are in and leveled. Actually, one of these is an original inlay. The other one had been lost some time ago. We've got a coat of finish on it, so it can soak in here for about a half hour. And I'm going to move along here to other things. Namely, up here. We may do the fretwork first. Let's see. Yeah. Anyway, don't get paid for making videos. Alrighty then, bridge is finished. That just needs to set overnight. I've done the fret work and oiled the fingerboard there too. It's very good shape, man. You can't see this. Let's see if I can get this better. Got a bit of glare here from the bench lights. Here we go. Get some of this away here. Ah. God love a nice Brazilian. Jeez. I wish I could get a really good look at this for you. There, oh, there you go. Brazilian rosewood. Circa 1964. Hmm. Okay. So, I have the nut off when a uh, quick little whack popped it right off there. It wasn't glued on very well. Very poorly shaped nut. I've cleaned up the glue. We're ready to start making a proper one here. So, tick tock. So, last night before I left, I managed to get the nut rough shaped and fitted. Glued in so it can sit overnight. So it's ready to cut the slots in it. So that's going to be our next move. I'm going to measure as I always do the amount I want in from the edges. Then I'll use calipers to space off the distances even and start slotting the nut.
All right. So if you can see this, there's actually six little notches in that nut, and we've used these calipers to space them all out perfectly even. That's the way we do it. So I'm going to open these up a little bit for the uh, string size. I just dropped the uh, calipers. They stuck in the stress mat that I was standing on. Luckily, it didn't hit my foot. <laughs> so Yep, that was a close one. <laughs> oh. It's like a Monday on a Thursday. Anyway, uh, this is going to be one of those mornings. I'm actually halfway through some tea. <coughs> I need a caffeine boost. <laughs> Man, it's been a long week. Anyway, we're going to get these notches. Like I say, opened up. We'll start cutting in the depth. Uh, another thing I'm going to mention here again, since I said, you know, there's a lot of information on these videos, but not everybody watches all of them, so I'm going to repeat something here. When I cut these slots in a nut for each string, I measure them, and then I actually check with the tuner to make sure that the guitar plays in tune at the first fret, so it doesn't play sharp. If your nut is a little bit too high, it'll play sharp. If it's too low, it'll buzz. So, you know, you got to be really careful with this. It's a big thing. Well, I've been sanding and polishing here for a little bit. And uh, give you a look. There's a nut that's finished. Funny little story here. Several years ago, way back actually, <laughs> a couple decades ago, I was working in a music store and uh, customer came in and needed a nut on his guild guitar. If I remember, it was a uh, guild F50. It's a big maple jumbo. And I made a bone nut for it and charged him, you know, I think, $35 or something. And he came in and looked at the nut and went, Are you sure that's not a plastic nut? I said, Yeah, I'm sure it's not a plastic nut. He says, I've never seen a bone nut look like that before. He says, Awfully shiny. So I proceeded to explain to him that uh, what I considered an art in going to making nuts, where the nut slots had to be right, it had to be beveled, you know, had ramps on the out up, outside of them here, and everything's nice, rounded, and polished. He says, are you sure that's not a plastic nut? You know, I'll never forget. I actually had to take the nut off and show him that it was a bone nut because he was insisting that I put a 75 cent plastic nut on it he kept saying yeah I've never seen a nut look like that it's gonna be plastic I've never seen a bone nut look like that of course you know me being probably about you know 25 27 years old at the time it was very hard for me to say well you know I've never seen one of my nuts before then <laughs> so, anyway uh, all right, there, history lesson. So, I'm going to take this apart. Tuner's going to come off. Got some massive cleaning here, dude. Got a lot of funk removal to take care of. But we are down to cleaning this guitar up and getting a pick guard on it. Get it strung back up, and we will be finished. So, anyway, here we go. Time to take uh, probably about a dozen screws out. I start rubbing and buffing my daily cardio workout. Although, you know, I've been working and working and working here once I woke up. <laughs> but anyway, I've realized it's well past lunchtime. So I had better uh, get some protein in me. Then we'll carry on with the rubbing and buffing. So, I'm sick of cooking. <laughs> I'm tired of anything I have on my recipe. So I have had Helen and Lisa across the street fix me lunch for the next two days. That's better. Now that I have my lunch in me, 
we have my tools here of cleaning two rags polishing compound so here we go wax on wax off clean and shine rub and buff however you want to look at it well that really didn't take very long it only took about a half hour all my cleaning is done got the top all cleaned up here we haven't put any guitar polish on the top yet because we're ready to put the pick guard back on now I'll be using this 3M pick guard adhesive sheets that I get from Luthier's Merchantile Mercantile however you want to pronounce it yeah anyway uh, I like theirs it's uh, very aggressive tack wise uh, the sheets come a little bit bigger than some of the other suppliers and we have to be very careful putting this on because once it's in position <laughs> it's in position so I'm going to peel the back off this get it ready and get it stuck on here we've got a really nice outline we have to match okay well we've just got this tuned up decent. Got all the fret problems taken care of. New nut, new bridge. Oop, bumped one of the tuners. But anyway, there you go. You get the gist of it. Pick guard went on really well. There was some shrinkage of uh, these uh, molded pick guards do tend to shrink just a little bit, so I tried to make that look even. But like I said, we've got a new bridge, new bridge saddle, new bridge plate, some fret work, new nut, massive defunctification. Just give you a look in. Yeah. Obatar is very clean and shiny now. And yeah, I don't want to hear it, guys. But he took all the patina off of it. Well, I took all the grime off of it. <laughs> so anyway, get over it. <laughs> so anyway, we have one finished. We got quite a bit of time in this thing, but uh, there's been a lot of work done. Keep in mind, like I said, we had to make the bridge and bridge plate. We made a bridge saddle, made a new nut, did lots of stuff. So I'm going to set this aside. I like to let these settle for about a week before they go out of the shop and tweak it as necessary because there's going to be a few things that's going to change as this settles in a little bit. Uh, we don't know how many years this guitar was actually unstrung before it came in here. So, so I'm going to put it away, we'll write up his bill, get it ready, give him a heads up, let him know what's going on, and I'm going to continue on with the next project, which was a tailor that I was working on the last couple of days as well, actually reset the neck on it, uh, put about nine frets so in it, and doing some work on it, but uh, that's a whole other story. I was talking earlier about you know, having a rough morning. Uh, it's pretty busy in here and I uh, actually bounce between here and the shop at home doing things I can't do here and actually spent until about 10 o'clock last night spraying lacquer on a broken Les Paul headstock that I'm refinishing the entire neck on. In West Virginia when you've got humidity around 90 percent you take those days you can get to spray. So anyway Hope you uh, get a little something from this. A 1964 J50 put back into service. Along with his B25 from 1963. 
So until next time, play nice.